Hello, and welcome to another edition of Tech Tuesday, presented by Delta Media Group, where we think that the soldering iron was overkill. I mean, couldn't you break the window by just hitting it with the soldering iron? I and mean, did you really have to heat it up and go through this whole... It just really seemed like overkill to break a window. Anywho, today we are going to take a look at how to choose the theme that you would like to use for your website, and ultimately customize that theme to your liking. Um, we haven't done a video on really going over setting up the website itself here in a while, and we've made a lot of changes, so we want to get into those and show you how that stuff works. So, first off, here we are on the dashboard page or the welcome page in DeltaNet 6. I'm going to go down to Website and Site Design, and that is going to allow me to choose my base, them base theme or template. So, as you can see, when we first land on this page, we're going to have all of our theme options laid out here on top and as you'll see as you go through these we've added quite a few new ones here so as we scroll down the list you can see this is one of the newer ones this is one of the newer designs so we've added a lot of additional designs here some of these will be more team related whereas other ones will be more um, individual agent related so you can see you have your selection of quite a few new ones here um, another system or another um, you know, feature that we've added here is that we have a theme features button that you can click on to get a little more insight into what this theme is and what kind of things it offers. Also this paragraph above gives you a little more explanation about what kinds of things will make this theme look the best. And the main thing to keep in mind here is that a theme like this one, for example, you can see the agent's head down here a little bit. This kind of theme is designed to have an agent photo that has a transparent background and so you'll want to make sure that you have one of those set up before you turn this theme on otherwise it just won't look as good. Um, this is another one that looks good if you have a um, a large photo with a transparent background. A number of them say you want your photo to be at least 300 by 450 pixels in size in order to look as good as possible on this template. So there are a lot of things like that you want to pay attention to. Now in addition to that, let's say this is one that we like, I can click here on theme features and you can see it loads up a list here that tells me what kind of theme features that uh, this theme supports and which of those things that I have set up already. Now, if there's a check box next to it, or a check mark next to it, that means that I already have that set up. So, you know, I'm set up in that aspect for this theme to look pretty good. But I don't have any bullet list items set up. Now, if I set those up on my overview page, this would turn into a green check mark. Uh, the other thing to point out is that it is possible for me to set this theme up and then go into that page and go in and add these features to it. This is just designed to point out to you, for this theme to look as good as it can, you'll want to have all of these things done or filled out. Uh, the only thing that we can't tell here is transparent agent photo. We know that you have an agent photo, but we have no way of knowing whether it has a transparent background or not. So um, also whether or not it's a portrait-oriented photo. So. You'll just want to make sure that you've set that up and just watch for this to be one of the items that shows up under theme features to know that that's something that you'll want to go in and do. Now we'll go ahead and close that out. And just real quick, to change that out, you would go up here and click on your name and click on profile. And that'll take you to your overviews page. And then you'll have an agent photo section there where you can change your photo. So now once you've chosen the theme that you want to go with, you just click on preview. That'll load up a preview in your browser so you can get just uh, an idea of what that is going to look like on your website. And you can scroll down a little bit, see some of the custom functionality, see where it drops in the agent photos. So I don't have a large transparent background photo, so you can see it looks a little silly here. <laughs> and that's why we point out all of those features that are going to make this template look really good. Now, once you've scrolled this down, if everything looks good, you can click on Set Live, and that'll set that as your new theme. And keep in mind, you can also see it what it'll look like on different devices here. So this is what it'll look like on a mobile device or a tablet or a full-size desktop computer or a laptop. Um, another thing of note here is that that theme features functionality is also available on this page. So you can look at the preview and then click on theme features and see what features you need to have in place for it to look really good. Now, if this is the one you want to go forward with, you'll just go up here and click on set live and that'll set that as your new theme. Now, for now, I'm going to close this out. I already have a theme selected, and we will go ahead and take a look at the one that I have in place. So this is the theme that I currently have in place. And you can see how it populated all of my information here, my welcome paragraph, my agent photo, contact information, all that stuff. And you can see you've got these featured link boxes down here. So this is kind of my base theme. Now, if I wanted to customize this, I can go here in the DeltaNet down to Website, 
and then down to Modular Theme Editor, and this will give me options to edit various things on that page. So from here, this is going to depend, or what options exist on this page will depend on which theme you've chosen, because everything on every theme isn't necessarily customizable. Um, and there are some elements of a theme that are completely missing from others, like there are some website themes that don't have these featured link boxes at all, so it wouldn't make sense to have uh, the settings in place to be able to customize those. So this page will be entirely populated based on which theme you've chosen. Now from here, there are settings for everything that is editable or all of the major pieces that are editable on that theme. So right here we have theme settings, primary color, so that'll change whatever the primary color is used on the theme and that fills in these boxes. Some of the text uses the primary color. So just think of it as everywhere where you see that color showing up is what'll change if you change this color here. And the next thing you can do is you can control the content that appears below the fold. So you can remove sections or determine what order those sections show in. So we can see now we have agent bio, listings, and box links. So if we scroll down, we have agent bio, listings, and box links. If we wanted to change the order of those, maybe we wanted the, uh, the box links to come first, then we could go over here and we could just take box links. And we'll just cut it. And go back to the beginning and paste it. And now if I save this page, box links is going to show up before the agent bio. So you can use this to reorder those sections. And you can use this to override the header name that shows up on the page. You can change the above the fold content. So each one of these fields labels what that's going to replace. So top title, bottom title, agent info is referring to the various sections up here that you can modify. And the best bet, because these are different on every theme, is to go ahead and experiment with these a little bit. Put some information in here, save it, see how that changes or how the site looks after that's changed, and then change it back or change it to something else if you'd like. Next, we have a title for the search section. So we take a look at the theme. We've got this property search section here, so if we wanted to change that title, we can do that. We have the agent bio section, listing section, so we break the whole thing down by sections and then give you access to the various bits and pieces available in those sections. So agent bio section is going to be here on this particular template. Listing section is going to be here. So we can see this says featured listings. If I wanted to change that, I could make it say something different. Um, and then I can also determine a handful of different functions. But again, these are going to be custom based on what's available in the template you're using. So you can just read through those, experiment with them, and find the right mix. And now the next thing you can do is the link boxes section. You can see it has its own block here also, so you can customize what each of these things links out to, the text in each of these sections, and even the name of the section itself. And that's all customizable here. And then as we scroll down, we have some sec pieces that we can customize in the testimonial section, and even all the way down in the footer. So basically, for every section that has some editable content, you'll have a box like this, and that's going to correspond to the correct section here. So here's your testimonial section, here's your contact section, or footer section, rather. So you have a lot of options as far as going in and being able to really fine-tune and customize the template itself. Now the next piece we have is this is the custom site background graphic. So this lets you actually change out the background graphic if you choose to. So if we take a look at the site and scroll up to the top, this would be our background graphic, everything that's behind here. So we can change that out to be a single graphic, a slideshow, or a video. In any of those cases, I would just say, so if we're going with a graphic, for example, we'll click there. We have a file uploader. I would just click Add Files, select a file on my computer, That'll make it appear here, and then if I click Start Upload, that'll upload that as my new background graphic. Um, I can do multiple to make it a slideshow, or I can do a video and have it do it that way also. Just keep in mind when you are adding a background video, the, uh, the rule there, or a good rule to go by there at least, is that you want it to be less than 20 seconds long and less than 20 megabytes in size. Any bigger than that, and it's kind of too big to be a background graphic. And keep in mind with those that you, know, you want it to be a graphic that loops real nice, um, and also you, know, you don't want to try to put a whole narrative there. There generally aren't users that go to the website and watch the background video. It's you know, just a decoration to run in the background, so don't, uh, don't, don't, don't overthink it. <laughs> Um, and then also, if you don't want to upload the files directly, if they're hosted somewhere else, you can put in the URL of those files here. Now the same thing exists there. If I switch to a background video, you see I can put a background video URL there. Also the additional option is that when you do a background video, 
you'll want to have a poster graphic set up that shows up in the background. Now what that's for is when a user goes to the website on a mobile device in order to save on the amount of data that the site transfers to their device, it won't load the video. It'll load just the poster graphic instead. So make sure you've got a good poster graphic to go in there so that mobile users um, are seeing what you want them to see. And just like the other background image, I could put in a URL here also. There we go, and now you can see we've got a separate field for mobile site background if we do want specifically mobile to be a little bit different. The poster background will also show up while the video loads if it is a larger video and takes a little time. And now the next piece we have here is you have the ability to customize the logo. So generally you can just select from your company logos down here. Um, what that is mostly meant for is if you have some dark backgrounds and a dark logo, you can select from the light logos so that they show up better on the website. You can see this is a light section, so the dark logo works well. And then down here in the footer, we have a darker section, so the lighter logo works well. So this lets you control the header logo, the one up at the top is that dark one, and then down at the bottom it's the light one. So that way you can control those out separately. And then the next piece we have here is home page title and meta tags. So from here, this lets you customize the meta tags that are used for SEO on the website. So you can change out the page title, which is going to show up here in the address bar. You can change the meta keywords, um, which can be a good idea to set, though they're not really used by search engines anymore. Those would just be comma separated single words and short phrases that describe the content of the website. And then meta description actually is a human readable description of the content on your website. So um, what do people go there for? Why would they go there? This description is a good place to put that, just a you know, short paragraph. Um, when you also run a search, if you go to Google, for example, if your page comes up within the search results, the title will be what you click on and the meta description will appear below it if there is a meta description defined. So if I just go to Google, and I search for real estate. This would be the page title, and then this piece down here would be the meta description, if there is a meta description. If you don't define a description, it'll just pull some content from your website and put that in there automatically. So there you have it. That is how you can go in. You can customize or set up, choose your website theme and customize it in Delta Net 6. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to send an email into support at deltagroup.com or give us a call and we'll be happy to walk you through this process or anything else you need. So thanks a lot for joining me and I will see you again next week.